Number one is going to be from the family of absolute value. So the V shape kind of got two linear lines and they kind of meet at a vertex. That's absolute value. Now the shading means it's going to be an inequality. So it's going to be some type of less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. So here we go. The vertex is going to be the main point. To get to that vertex, you always start at 0, 0. So you're going to go over 1, 2, go over 2, and then go up 2. So the absolute value function, the parent function, is just y equals absolute value of x. So these long skinny bars. Okay, now that parent function, this is if it were to start at 0, 0. So we slid it to the right twice, and then we slid it up twice. And if you add or subtract inside the parentheses, that moves it left and right. So it's going to be x minus 2, and then going up or down, that happens outside of the parentheses. So it's going to go up 2. So this right here, except for we got to erase the equals and we need to put an inequality. So we're going to erase the equals and in its place it's everything, this line, everything is shaded below it and it is a dotted line. So if it is a dotted line it's going to be one of these two. If it were a solid line and it could touch the line then it would be one of the bottom two, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. So greater than the line or equal to the line. So because it's everything underneath, it's going to be less than. So your inequality has got to be less than. Less than is below, greater than is everything above. So for your notes, you got to remember the shifts. So we got... Uh, Your basic form is kind of x minus h plus k. So there's got to be a minus. So if I want to shift it 4 to the right, x, there has to be a minus. Minus is just part of the model. It's not part of the number. 4 to the right, be 4. So this moves... 4 to the right. And then if it was y equals, if you want to go left 4, so there has to be a minus in the model. Left 4, that's a negative 4. And then a minus minus, that's actually the same as a plus. This moves 4 to the left. Then if you want to move it up 4, that has to happen outside after the parenthesis closes plus 4, and then if you want to move it down 4, you subtract 4. Okay, number these guys, the function notation, um, they want you to evaluate the function at 0, at a negative 1, and at 1.6. So it's kind of a, a good question. 0, if you evaluate this function at 0, what they want you to do is on the x, they're giving you a table here. We want x's and y's, and these numbers are what you're going to plug in for x. So plug in a 0 for x, plug in a negative 1 for x, plug in a 1.6 for x. So ignore the shading, just pretend there's the line right here. Okay, let's not worry about the shading. So 0 for x, 0 is right here you go up until you touch the line and that dot right there is 0 comma 4 negative 1 go left 1 and you're gonna have to go all the way up to 5 then if you go over 1.6 so 1.6 is somewhere like right here go all the way up to there and you just estimate that's somewhere between 2 and 3 maybe it's like 2.3 something okay number 2 
function notation. So this function's name's Frank or something, Freddy. And here is the rule for Freddy. 4 multiplied by whatever you plug in, squared, and then minus 3. So let's do 3 first. 3 is easier than 2. Okay, Hank, this function wants you to substitute a negative 3 in for Hank. So here we go. If you plug in a negative 3 into Hank, it's going to be 2 times x squared plus 2. So always wrap your x's in parentheses. And that negative 3 is going to be plugged in to where the x is. So I'm going to plug a negative 3 there. Now you just you could type it in exactly as it is on your calculator and you won't miss it. If you know your operations, you got to do exponents first. So negative 3 squared is a negative 3 times a negative 3, and that is a 9. So you got 2 times 9 plus 2. 2 times 9, you got to do that first. That's 18. 18 plus 2. When you plug in a negative 3 into Hank, it spits out 20. Okay, number 2. They don't want you to plug in a number. They want you to plug in algebra. So you need, I'm going to rewrite this, 4 times n squared subtract 3. So wrap the n in parentheses. And in place of n, you're going to plug whatever is in this. i got to plug the whole thing. i got to plug n minus 1. And now you've got to do exponents first. n minus 1 squared is n minus 1 times itself n minus 1. You have to write it just like this. You've got to times it by itself. You've got to do some distributing. So n times n is n squared. n times a minus 1 is a minus n. A minus 1 times n is a minus n. And a minus 1 times a minus 1 is a plus 1. And you can add up these like terms. So you're going to get n squared minus 2n plus 1. But that whole thing needs to be multiplied by 4. Because you're going to do 4 times whatever that is squared. So we squared it. And now you got to times everything by 4. So 4 times all 3 of them. 4 times the n squared is 4n squared. 4 times the minus 2n is minus 8n. And 4 times 1 is a 4. Okay, now we got that done. All you got to do at the very end is minus 3. So these two play together. A 4 plus 4 and a minus 3. Your final answer is 4n squared minus 8n plus 1. That's what you get when you plug into Freddy uh, n minus 1. Okay, number 4. Uh, cool Athletics introduced a new power sneaker in one of their stores. The table shows the sales for the first six weeks. So A, graph it. This time is always going to be your X. And Y is going to be your pair sold. So X, I just need to go up to six, so I'll count by ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now the money, or the pair, this is the number of pairs sold, 8 to 44. So, what can I count by? 10, 20, I think I can count by 5s. So, if we call that a 10, we call that a 20, call that a 30, call that a 40. Okay, here we go. So the x-axis is weeks, and this is number sold. So at one week, I sold eight pair. So one to eight. Then two, I sold ten. Three, I sold fifteen. Four, I sold twenty-two. 5, I sold 31, and then 6, we sold 44, okay, so, you do not connect the dots, just leave them, just leave 6 dots right there, 
Okay, now the domain and the range. The domain is everything on the x-axis. So, your domain is going to be... <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, now if you connected them, so if you did connect them, so from week one to week two, so right here, if you think there does exist a week 1.5, and 1.5 at week one and a half, you sold somewhere between 8 and 10. If you do connect them, that kind of changes the picture. So if you do connect them, your domain is going to be, and then probably you got to go back to somewhere here, 0. The first week, from the beginning to the first week, you just sold some shoes. So if you connect them, your domain is going to be everything from 0 to 6, including 6 and including 0. Okay, C. Is this a function? Yes, it is, because it passes the vertical line test. So anywhere I draw a vertical line, it's only going to touch it once. Okay, now D and E, let's change E, let's not do cubic, this looks like it might fit more of a quadratic. So the regressions, if you don't know how to do it, you got to have me show you on the calculator, you have to do this on the calculator, you put them into like the Excel file, you got a name, column A and column B, um, and then you got to open up that pink document, the data and stats and plot the points and then calculate the regression so this is all calculator so if you don't know how to calculate a linear regression or a quadratic regression make sure I show you how on the calculator okay number five piecewise functions here we go so Hank is gonna be two different lines he's gonna be this line if x is bigger than 0, but then he's going to change and be this line if x is less than 0. So here we go, this first line. Hank equals 4 minus x. Okay, that's a linear polynomial, so it's going to be pretty easy. If it's in the linear family, you just need to identify m and you need to identify b. So the linear model is y equals mx plus b. So m is the number in front of x. So in front of x, I got a negative 1. Now b is the constant all by itself, so b is going to be 4. Now m is your slope. Slope is rise over run. If it's not a fraction, you can always make it a fraction. Just put it over 1. Okay, now this is enough information to graph it. So B is your first dot. So you come on the Y axis, that's your Y intercept, come up with four, one, two, three, four, you got a dot, and then use your slope to get the rest of the dots. So go rise over run, go down one, right one, 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 up one, left one, up one, left one. So that linear line is going to go forever and ever in both directions but this line only exists right here this is the tricky part it only exists when x is greater than zero so on your x number line right here here is zero so I've I've got like a boundary line right here is zero so it's gonna cut it in half so which half exists? The half on the left of 0 or the half on the right of 0? And the half exists anything greater than 0. So this is the half that is, exists. So I got to erase these dots. But I got to do some more erasing. Because it does not exist at 0. 
it only exists immediately after zero anything greater than zero so it does not exist on this line your circle has got to be left open okay now let me change colors let's graph the bottom half so Hank is gonna be a new line he's gonna be a negative 2x minus 2 and this is easy m is this guy right here m is negative 2 over 1 b is the number all by itself b is negative 2 so b is my first dot on the y axis come down negative 2 I got a dot and then use your slope so rise over run down to right one down to right one up to left one up to left one up to left one okay so my line is going to go through all those dots forever and ever but it's not because it says this line is only existing when x is less than zero so I was same boundary line at zero this time it's anything less than zero so it's anything on the left side so I've got to erase this dot and this dot has got to be an open circle that is not filled in because it does not exist on the line it only exists immediately after that line okay your domain this is a great question your domain and range the domain is everything that exists left and right so as far as looking left this arrow is going up and it's going left it's going to go all the way to negative infinity Whoa. okay now let's see I messed stuff up and the blue line is going to go all the way to the right so it's going to go to positive infinity. So it's going to cover everything from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity except for this guy right here. It never exists at zero. It exists at everything but zero. So there's a couple ways to write it. This, I don't know if you remember this or if we even talked about it. This is shorthand for all real numbers except zero it does not exist as zero so all real numbers a zero or you guys have been doing this way we go negative infinity to zero and then zero to positive infinity and zero needs to be parentheses because it does not touch zero okay the range up and down as far as looking up and down okay this red arrow goes forever up so all the way to positive infinity and the blue arrow goes forever down all the way to negative and they do overlap so the range is all real numbers it covers everything negative infinity all the way to positive infinity okay number six this is going to be a step function uh, stitch in time they charge 40 bucks per hour or any part of the hour for their labor so let's draw a graph so 40 bucks per hour or any part of that hour so if you only need five minutes worth they're still charging you 40 bucks so five minutes and 59 minutes exactly the same so here we go 40 bucks right here all the way 40 40 40 40 40 as soon as you hit one that's the end of your forty dollar range so at one it is forty at zero it is not forty it's zero they're not going to charge you for zero minutes then you go to one to two hours so forty bucks an hour that's forty so we're going to go up to eighty and you're going to pay eighty bucks anything after one hour so circle the one because at the one you don't pay 80 at the one you pay 40 
but then one hour and one second you gotta pay eighty all the way up to two hours and that's the last time you gotta pay eighty if you need two to three hours of labor it's gonna look just like this every time it's going up forty so this is a step function okay number one the domain the domain is anything that exists on the X so hours um, you can't have negative hours so the first thing that is going to exist is zero and you can have zero all the way this shows seven hours but I guess you could have they could work on it in theory infinity hours so zero parenthesis I guess you could do zero in a bracket because zero is included you can work zero hours on it parenthesis around infinity or if you just look at this and go zero to seven I could probably give you credit to you okay the range oh this is a good one the range is the best one okay all these numbers on the y 40 exists but 39 does not or 20 or 10 or 5 you're never gonna have to pay him five bucks ten bucks you're only going to pay him 40 or 80 or 120 or 160 so your range is not between numbers your range is a specific amount of numbers so your range the first element in the range is 40 and then 80 and then 120 and then 160 etc etc okay now let's evaluate this function when it's zero, how much you gotta pay? So at zero, f of zero is actually zero. F of six, on that sixth hour, how much do you gotta pay? You gotta pay 240 bucks. F of 0.5, so a half hour, how much you gotta pay for a half hour? You gotta pay 40 bucks. Okay, now we're going backwards. This is a piecewise function. You're looking at the graph. You've got to write the piecewise function. So let's do this line right here. Okay, this is a key point of the line. All you need is two things. You need to identify the slope and the y-intercept. That is the b. The b is 0. Okay, the slope is... you got to connect these dots. So you go rise over run rise over run so it looks like you're going from dot to dot you're going up three over one up three over one so your slope's going to be three over one so that function is y equals three x plus zero and you don't need to write plus zero okay now this is its starting point right here and it looks like it goes up and right forever to infinity so this exists only if right here where is this starting point this starting point whoops it's not a very straight line the starting point if I go up on the X it starts at negative 2 so if X what negative 2 is bigger than negative 2 or is smaller than negative 2 and it exists anything to the right of negative 2 so that is greater than this only exists when x is greater than a negative 2 and it is not greater than or equal to because that starting point is not shaded in it's empty so it does not exist at negative 2, it exists anything immediately after negative 2. Okay, the second line, let's find M and B. Ooh, okay, line number 2, B is going to be hard to find, because you're going to have to continue the line. So I'm going to erase all this stuff. It's getting too cluttered. Okay, now... Is it just going up one over one, up one over one, up one over one? So go up one over one, up one over one, right there. That is where the line would cross if it went forever, but it does not go forever. 
So, M B B is 2, and the M is just up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, so M is 1. So this one's easy. Y equals 1X plus 2. But this only exists if X, here is where it starts to exist. It's on the X, it starts to exist at negative 2. And this one, it exists anything to the left, and that's smaller. So that is less than or equal to because its starting point is circled and shaded in. Number eight. Okay, this is a quadratic. So, quadratic, the original quadratic is just y equals x squared, and that starts at zero, zero, and it's kind of like the absolute, except for it's curvy, it's not straight. So, this function, x minus 3 squared plus 2. Okay, you need to take this function, and let's do a quick graph real quick. Real quick, super quick. You're going to start at 0, 0. Okay, this minus 3 in the parentheses means you're going to move it 3 times to the right. 1, 2, 3. And then this plus 2 means you're going to move it up to dun, dun. So right here. There you go. And your parabola is going to look something like that. Now they want you to transform it. So slide it up once and right twice. So if you take this and slide it up once and right twice, it's something like right here. Now, what is the function for this new transformed parabola? So it is this. P of x. It's got to be different, because this guy right here is P, this guy right here is F. F for Freddy, P for Paul. Paul is going to be equal to X. Okay, instead of minus 3, I went 3 to the right. I went a total of, I went 2 more, so it's going to be X minus 5 squared. And I did not go up too high. I went up 2 and then 1 more, so I went plus 3. This is it right here. Number nine, look at number nine real quick, real quick. So you're going to go minus three. Well, that's the same ones we just barely did. So it's just three to the right. There you go, not up or down, so it lands right on the line. There we go. Okay, nine, we'll call this guy f of x. So our new one can be anything you want, q of x. Here's what we gotta do. We gotta flip it over the x and then slide it two units to the left. So flip it over the x and then two units to the left. One, two, there we go. It's gonna be flipped upside down like this. Okay, what flips it upside down is if there's a negative out front. And then two units to the left, instead of going right three, I'm only gonna go right one. Okay, that is it. We're halfway done. Okay, now, I think that was the first half of the quarter. Now, the second half of the quarter, we started doing polynomial functions. So, let's look at 11. For each graph, you got to do three things. A, describe the end behavior. I want to know where these are ending up. So, number 11... I've got to describe this arrow right here. This arrow is going down and right. So, that is the Y. So this guy right here. The Y is going to negative infinity. So Y approaches negative infinity as x, the x is the kind of left right, and this arrow is going down and it's going left. So x is also approaching negative infinity. Okay, now this arrow right here, the right hand side, f of x is approaching, it's going up 
to positive infinity as also it's going to the right x approaches positive infinity and I think that's k12 this arrow is going down and left and this arrow is going down and left so that is copy and paste right there for 12 this arrow though is going down and right while on 11 it was going up and right okay so this guy's going to be a little different so f of x is approaching he's going to negative infinity as the x approaches infinity okay a is done b determine whether it's an odd polynomial or an even degree polynomial so 11 is odd because one arrow is going up and one other arrow is going down and this could be let's see one two three four this could be degree five so quintic number 12 they're both going the same direction so it's going to be even and that's one two three four five so this is degree six okay and then last one C the number of real zeros so if it's degree five the real zeros are one two three so that means I got three real zeros and that must mean I have two imaginary zeros and remember your imaginaries always come in pairs so it's like 12 12 I have no reals so that must mean I have all six imaginary next you need to draw your own picture so here we go okay so the y is going down as the x is going right so your arrow is going to be something like this it's going down and it's going right okay y is going up as x goes left so it's going to be something like this now it's got to have three real zeros and two imaginaries so it's a degree five it's a quintic so three real zeros that means it's got to cross three times one two three okay but it's got to have two imaginaries so that means I've got to change directions again. Boom, boom, boom. So here's how you know. This is degree 5. So that means it must have four turning points. One, two, three, four turning points. And three real zeros, that means it crosses once, twice, three times. So that's not too bad. Just remember, if it's degree 5, there's going to be four turning points. Kind of four of these maximum and minimum points. Hmm, which one is a function? So it's kind of like a, a B, C, D. Kind of a multiple choice thing. Maybe check all of them. Check more than one. Uh, a is a a function a is no because 8 gives you 5 so on week 8 you sold 5 pairs of sneakers but then again on week 8 you sold 6 pairs of sneakers so that's impossible on week 8 you must sell the same amount of sneakers B is a no because of the same thing on week 2 two you sold three pairs of sneakers but then on week two you sold a negative three pairs of sneakers the vertical line test if you draw a line it's going to touch more than one dot so that's no c uh, is yes that's okay because vertical line test passes every dot d is a big no 
because on week five you sold 14 pairs of sneakers but then again on week five it's reported that you sold 19 pairs of sneakers that's impossible 11 okay oof division of polynomials okay this guy right here that's a fancy way of writing a division because if you have an exponent that's negative one you this exponent's going to this whole group here you need to take it to the bottom so it's really going to be this 8x cubed plus 9x squared plus 5 and then on the bottom 8x plus 9 so it's really you're dividing it by 8x plus 9 now this needs to be done with long division because in front of the x there's an 8 so here we go 8x plus 9 uh, now okay this is a trick question because look it goes cubic quadratic three two one zero it's skipping x to the one it's skipping the linear this is x to the zero because anything to the zero is one and five times one is just five so here we go i'm gonna go my eight x cubed then i'm gonna go nine x squared but then since they left it out i'm gonna put zero x one plus five okay now the long division you just look at the first and the first and ask yourself 8x times what is 8x cubed and 8 times 1 is 8 and x times x squared is going to give me x cubed so I'm going to stack them up cubes above cubes quadratics above quadratics, linears above linears, constants above constants. So now I've got to multiply 1x squared by 8x, which is 8x cubed. And then i got to multiply 1x squared by the 9, and that is 9x squared. And next you got to subtract change that to a minus, change that to a minus, those undo, and these also undo, and this, we're done, man, zero x's is just kind of zero, um, five, that is your remainder, so, plus five over eight x plus nine, that one was not really too bad, but if you see this times something to the negative one, that's just a fancy way of writing division. Okay, the next one, you can use synthetic division. So I am going to, if as long as the coefficient's one, here we go, synthetic division. In the box, you're going to put opposite of uh, a minus eight. You're going to put eight. Then here we go, five, negative 40, and again, it's skipping cubic, quadratic, 0, negative 1. Bring the first one down. That's 5. Now multiply. 8 times 5 is 40. Now add them. That's 0. Times them. 8 times 0 is 0. Add them. That's 0. 8 times 0 is 0. Add them. That's a negative 1. And this last guy is always your remainder. So your answer is going to be 5. And because it was a cubic, it's going to be 5n squared. It's always one less. Um, plus your remainder, a negative 1 over n minus 8. There we go. Okay, now... Oh, whoops, let's go back. Multiple choice. Which one is the correct synthetic division? Okay, it's going to be C or D. Because look, it goes, it skips again. Cubic, it's missing the quadratic. So it should be 2x cubed plus 0x squared minus 5x plus 40. So it's got to be 2 
0 minus 542, 0 minus 542, 0 minus 540. So those are both the same. Now in the box is going to be the opposite of plus 3. It's going to be minus 3. So we are going with C. C is what you want. C is good. Page 12. Okay, drop, mix and match. Um, this is a cubic. So, it is either going to go to this guy, or it is going to go to this guy. And there's your cubic. Look at these numbers right here. These are your y-intercepts. So this is going to cross the y-axis at 7. So this one right here, the bottom one goes to here. This one does not have a y-intercept, so it's going to cross at 0, which it does right here. So the top one goes here. Okay, these two are degree 4, so they're evens. That means both arrows are the same way. Okay, this one crosses at 3, so that goes here. And this one crosses at a negative 255, so that goes here. Okay, what do we got left? Oh, this is it. Last page. Okay, we're in the home stretch. 13. I wonder if I copied. Hmm, I think I did. Okay. Here we go, this is where we just barely left off on. So you gotta figure out what kind of polynomial this is and then all of the possibilities for reals and imaginary roots. So this first this guy's gonna be easier. This is degree six. So the fundamental theorem of algebra says there are going to be six roots. You can have a combination of reals and imaginaries. So if it is six here are your options. Reals, imaginaries. I could have all six be real and zero be imaginary. Now remember, your imaginary's got to come in pairs. They got to come in doubles. So your next option is I could have four reals and two imaginaries because that's a total of six. Or I could have two reals and four imaginaries. Or I could have zero reals and they could all be imaginary. So that is it. Those are your options. You got one, two, three, you got four options. Okay, this polynomial, if I div if I times all this, how do you really do is that's x1, that's x1, that's x1, that's x2. So two, three, four, five. This is degree five. So that means there's gonna be five zeros. There's gonna be five roots. So your reals and your imaginaries. Okay, I could have all five be real, zero imaginary. This will not work. Four real and one imaginary, because your imaginary's got to come in doubles. So three real and two imaginary, or one real and four imaginary. So you got three options. Okay, number one. Here are the roots. You give me the polynomial function. So a negative 4 and 3i and a negative 3i. Because your imaginaries always come in pairs and they're always opposites. So, here we go. This is going to be a cubic. And you must, 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 must do your imaginaries first. So minus 4 plus 4, because that will give me 0. 3i, so I'm going to go minus 3i, because that will give me 0, and a minus 3i, so I'm going to go plus 3i, that will give me 0, there you go. You have to, have to, have to do your imaginaries first, or you're going to get it wrong. So, let's start times and through x times x, that's going to give me x squared. x times a plus 3i is a plus 3ix. A minus 3i times x is a minus 3ix, and a minus 3i times a plus 3i is a minus 9i squared. Okay, these two zero out. They always, always, always will, so that's nice. And you gotta remember this. i squared is a negative 1. So a negative 9 times a negative 1 
is really x squared plus 9. So you got x squared plus 9. That is your answer that you must multiply now by the x plus 4. So you start times and through x squared times x, that's x cubed. x squared times 4, that's 4x squared. 9 times x, that's plus 9x. 9 times 4, that is 36. So you have a cubic polynomial with four terms. None of those four terms are like terms, so you just leave it as it is. This is it. That will give you these three roots. Okay, number two. All real, no imaginary. It's going to be a cubic. x minus 1, x minus 3, x minus 5. If they're all real, it doesn't matter which one you do first. So if I do this guy times this guy, I'm going to get x squared. If I do it in my head, it's going to be x squared minus 4x plus 3. And then you times that to the x minus 5. So x squared times x is going to be x cubed. x squared times a minus 5 is a minus 5x squared. A minus 4x times x is a minus 4x squared. A minus 4x times a minus 5 is a plus 20x. Then you got to take the 3. 3 times the x is 3x. 3 times the minus 5 is minus 15. So if you start to add up your like terms, these are like terms, your quadratics. So your final answer is going to be x cubed minus 9x squared. And these, 20x and 3x, that's going to be 23x minus 15. That's it. Make good notes, study hard, make your mama proud.